Deep Learning, Machine Learning, Data Mining, Knowledge Discovery, Natural Language Processing, Text Mining, Digital Humanities, Evolutionary Algorithms. Artificial intelligence is becoming more and more important these days. It is playing a huge role in our lives. You can find it not only in many science fiction movies, but also in many areas of our lives and in many devices that we use every day. It's on our phones or on social media like Facebook and Instagram. I keep hearing questions like, what is artificial intelligence? What components does it have? What is it capable of? In this video, I will use a poster that I created for this purpose and explain what artificial intelligence is and what subfields it has. The poster can be downloaded for free from my homepage on GitHub. I will include the link in the description. Hi, my name is Josh Konseratzade and I did extensive research on various aspects of artificial intelligence. Before we start with the individual areas of AI, let us talk about the history and theory of AI. The first ideas about AI go back to the beginning and the middle of the 20th century. One of the founding fathers of computer science, Alan Turing, published a paper in 1950 with the title Computing Machinery and Intelligence. In this paper, he addresses the question of whether a machine can think like a human. He suggests a test to determine AI. This test is now called the Turing test after his name. Here a person communicates with another person and with a machine via a screen. If a person can no longer distinguish between these two, then this machine is a real AI. Of course, there are some contra-arguments in this research but an improved version of the Turing test is still used today. Another aspect in the theory of AI is the distinction between weak and strong AI. By the term weak AI, we mean intelligent systems that are only developed or trained for a specific purpose. An example, self-driving cars. They can use cameras to analyze the situation on the road, use GPS data and recognize danger beforehand. Another example, a program for playing chess. Or algorithms to automatically identify faces in the pictures and so on and so forth. All these systems essentially contain the same technology, mostly a pre-trained artificial neural network. However, because it was designed for one purpose only, many people consider this form of AI to be limited and stupid. Here then comes the term strong AI. By this term, we mean AI which is developed to solve more general, more universal tasks. To have emotions, a self-awareness and a freedom of choice. This form of AI is mostly developed in the laboratories of larger tech companies or leading research institutions around the world. Let's then start with the first part. Data mining and knowledge discovery is often used to extract additional information from large databases. This subfield has historically emerged as an extension of the database management systems. The aim is to use statistical and mathematical methods to find information or knowledge that is not explicitly stored in the database. A famous example of this is Pampers and Beer. Usually, the supermarkets only store information about who is buying what and when. But after applying data mining to this data, they find that, among other things, pampers and beer are being bought together. The reason for that is young fathers. To make it easier for them to buy these goods, many supermarkets put these two product shelves close to each other. Now, that's a simple example, but if you dig deeper into data mining, you will quickly understand that you can get a lot more information out of the data than the data itself. For example, you can identify associations or anomalies in the data, divide data into coherent groups or clusters, 
create predictions and forecast, etc. Our second sub-area is called text mining. Text mining is closely related to data mining with the difference that it uses large collections of text as a data source. These texts can come from the internet, such as social media and blogs, online magazines, or from other databases, such as legal firms, offices, libraries, etc. In addition to the methods of data mining, text mining has its own methods that are specifically tailored for the text collections. Topic modeling, for example, is a family of algorithms that are used to extract topics from big amounts of text. Here, questions such as which current topics are discussed in social media can be answered. In order to be able to search and handle larger amounts of text optimally, text mining uses information retrieval methods. Another sub-area is called digital humanities. The focus here is on the digital handling of the humanities. Since our cultural goods are increasingly being digitized or digitally generated, the knowledge gained from the humanities is used to develop interdisciplinary methods. Application examples are diverse from digital archives to museums to digital editions and portals, online dictionaries and tools for capturing humanities data. The classic points of contact here are to linguistic and literary studies, history, philosophy, art and cultural studies. Many criticize AI for waking a rather technical and robotic impression when dealing with it. Many think it lacks the creativity. Well. This subfield will contribute a lot to counteract this in the future and make AI more closer to our culture. Our next subfield is called Natural Language Processing, also known as NLP. NLP deals with the digital processing of languages such as English, German, French, Spanish, Arabic or Chinese and many others that are spoken around the globe and used as means of communication. The focus here is on how computers can best understand spoken and written language. Areas of application are diverse. As an example, today we can use tools such as Siri or Amazon Alexa to issue a voice command to our cell phones or computers and thus control them. The spoken language or the text on the internet can be simultaneously translated into other languages or from other languages into English. Another example would be the ability to extract specific information or content from larger amounts of text. All this is possible thanks to the latest developments in the language technology. If you want to know more about different subfields of NLP, check out my poster and my video about it. The link to the video will appear in the corner. NLP is connected to linguistics in order to better understand and study the grammar of individual languages. In addition, NLP has recently been using the methods from machine learning and deep learning because these deliver the best results. In order to examine a language or to be able to extract the grammar of a language automatically, huge language corpora are created these days. These mostly contain a collection of text from newspapers and magazines, from literature, legal text, etc. In addition, there is also a part with recorded and transcribed spoken language. Our next sub-area is becoming increasingly important for research and application of AI. Machine learning is now at the core of every AI project. Machine learning deals with algorithms that can learn from data. In this context, it's also said that these algorithms can be trained. A simple example invented by me to describe the difference to the classic approach would be the following. Suppose we want to write a simple program that greets the user with either good morning or good day, good afternoon, depending on the time of day. A very simple possibility would be then to formulate a rule with a predefined time such as 12 o'clock in the noon and the program gives a message good morning till then and after 12 o'clock good afternoon. 
If we want to solve this problem with machine learning, we would take data on how people normally greet each other, for example in chats or forums, and automatically determine and set this predefined time. The advantage here lies in the fact that this time can change depending on the culture or even on the company. In reality, the application of machine learning makes no sense in this example. But there are also problems in life that can only be solved best with the help of machine learning. There are two reasons for this. First, the objective reality often changes very quickly. And the second, sometimes a problem is usually far too difficult to grasp. The number of rules or heuristics would explode and the easiest way to do this is for an algorithm to automatically extract these rules. An example for the first case would be the filtering of spam emails. Actually, our email addresses are bombarded every day with spam emails, such as advertisement, phishing emails, and so on. But a spam filter, which is built into our email servers, can distinguish these from normal emails using trained algorithms. The attacks often change from time to time to look more and more like normal emails and above all to bypass our filters. Often, however, it is sufficient to retrain the algorithms and the spam filters are up to date. An example for the second case would be a system to automatically recognize faces in the images. To formulate everything mathematically, what a face should be in a picture would result in a lot of formulas and descriptions. We should consider that we have to take into account factors such as the angle, the distance, the color tones, etc. It is recommended here actually to train an algorithm with many pictures and learn all these rules automatically. Usually, one of modern deep learning architectures are used for this, which we will discuss in the next section. As a rule, a distinction is made between supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning means providing additional information from a human processor in addition to the data. For example, before face recognition software is even programmed, the images with faces are separated from all other images and labeled as such. Supervised learning includes methods such as classification or categorization. For example, is the search face on the picture or not? Or a prognosis or prediction. The classic algorithm here is, for example, a Bayesian classifier which assigns each object to the class to which it belongs with the greatest probability. Or decision trees, which create a tree from the decision rules during the training. When classifying, the algorithm runs through this tree and decides on the correct branch or not. But there are methods that belong to unsupervised learning, such as clustering or component analysis. Here, the algorithms try to learn certain regularities based on the data without additional information. They try to group certain phenomena, events or objects in the data. Our next subfield is, as mentioned before, a special form of machine learning. Deep learning deals with a special family of algorithms, namely with artificial neural networks. The development of these algorithms was inspired by the functionality of the human brain. They work in a similar way to a Bayesian classifier or decision tree, but they differ in their expressive power thanks to the high number of neurons or layers of neurons. That's why the field is also called deep or deep layered learning. Another advantage of the artificial neural networks lies in the way how the neurons are activated also called the activation function in the algorithm. As a rule, a nonlinear activation function for neurons is used here. As a result, the networks can represent the complex objects or events from the reality much more precisely. Research in this subfield knows many ways how the synapses, or more simply the connections, between neurons can be organized. 
LSTM, long short term memory, or convolutional networks can be named as examples for these forms. They are also known as deep learning architectures. The mathematical basis for this area can be found in linear algebra and analysis. Programming is absolutely necessary, although the same applies to all other areas of AI. Plus, since the artificial neural networks need large amounts of data in order to be trained and can become quite huge, the fields like supercomputers and big data can be very helpful. An important subfield of AI is devoted to evolutionary algorithms. While artificial neural networks were inspired by how human brains work, they imitate the most important process in the nature – evolution. In nature, mutation is a basic mechanism for evolution, as minimal random changes take place in the genes of organisms. The driving force of evolution, on the other hand, is natural selection. In this way, the better mutations are selected and passed on the later generations. Chance and genetic diversity often have the best solutions to problems in nature. Evolutionary algorithms simulate this process. Usually, they have two components – genetic representation of the data or the problem and the fitness function. The fitness function then simulates the so-called genetic operators, which consist of mutation, recombination and selection. The strength of evolutionary algorithms is indeed due to genetic variability. This allows you to find solutions that might not be easy or not immediately imaginable, but are optimally tailored to a specific problem. That brings us to the last point on our poster, symbolic AI. It tries to simulate intelligence on a higher level, namely on the level of logic. The knowledge is formulated here as closely as possible to human knowledge and language with logical connection so that a logical conclusion can be automatically driven. So-called ontologies are used for knowledge representation, which contain a linguistically formulated and formally ordered representation of a set of terms and their relationships between them. These ontologies, or the knowledge of what they contain, can focus to a certain domain. These systems are often called expert systems. So, in this video I briefly presented the subfields of AI. I hope that this makes clear what AI can do these days. It must be said that the development in this area is very dynamic, new algorithms and methods are developed every day. If you have any questions, please comment below. See you in the next video. Bye bye.